right. Stephen Hawking has been called one of our greatest minds of our generation, possibly of the century, and maybe ever. He's done groundbreaking work on black holes, relativity, cosmology. He has a, the mega best-selling book, A Brief History of Time, mm -hmm. sold 10 million copies. And it brought cosmology from the frontier of physics into people's living rooms. The cosmos, with its twinkling stars and vast galaxies, has always been like the greatest mystery novel, each chapter revealing a new secret. From ancient astronomers who tracked the motion of stars and planets without telescopes to modern-day physicists, our quest to understand its intricacies is unending. But sometimes these secrets can be tough for many of us to grasp. This is where brilliant minds like Stephen Hawking come in. Despite facing huge challenges with his health, he explored deep questions about our universe. His ideas not only changed how we see space, but also sparked many debates. Now, one of his biggest ideas has gotten a nod. Neil deGrasse Tyson, another big name in the world of space and stars, has given new weight to one of Hawking's theories. This is no ordinary discovery. It sent shockwaves through the scientific community, challenging established beliefs and opening doors to new realms of understanding. What is this monumental revelation? How does it change our perspective of the vast cosmos? And how can we be sure of its authenticity? Come with us on a journey as we delve deep into this revelation. Black holes are mysterious and powerful regions in space where nothing, not even light, can escape once it gets too close. This point of no return is called the event horizon. An interesting theory by Stephen Hawking, known as Hawking's Area Theorem, states that the total area of this event horizon doesn't change over time. Despite this, the theorem was initially met with skepticism by many in the scientific community. And now, 50 years later, scientists from MIT and elsewhere have used gravitational wave measurements to verify Hawking's area theorem. According to their findings, the first gravitational wave signal ever observed by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory was in 2015. Beyond that, a new black hole and a huge amount of energy have also been caught traveling through space and time as gravitational waves. This really means that Hawking's area theorem is correct. The sum of the horizon areas of the black holes that formed the new black hole cannot be smaller. Meanwhile, the current study, in which the physicists revisited the signal before and after the cosmic collision, has confirmed with 95% certainty that the total event horizon area did not decrease after the collision occurred. Additionally, their results provide the first empirical evidence for Hawking's area theorem which had previously only been demonstrated analytically. As a result, future gravitational wave signals will now be tested to see if they further confirm Hawking's theorem or indicate the existence of new law-breaking physics. Or is that already happening? You see, as per recent claims made by Neil deGrasse Tyson, the James Webb Space Telescope may eventually be able to offer the evidence needed to support Hawking's theory once and for all, given it is a fitting respect to the legacy of a man who, despite his unparalleled knowledge, did not live to see the scientific tools that were necessary to either prove or reject his beliefs. Now we know that in 1970, Stephen Hawking came up with the bold hypothesis that the mysterious dark matter could be made up of black holes that were created during the intense beginning of the universe. And mind you, this is a concept that not only Tyson, but also the greater scientific world finds fascinating, even though it is filled with issues. But moving on, in the year 2021, the story took a thrilling new turn when three astronomers expanded upon Stephen Hawking's groundbreaking theory. Their work not only opened a window into the possibility of the existence of supermassive black holes, but also provided an acceptable justification for the mystery surrounding dark matter. According to them, the nature of dark matter and the mechanisms behind the generation of black holes have been scientific mysteries for quite some time. But thanks to a recent confluence of ideas, these mysteries have been brought together to form a single unit. Priyamvada Natarajan, an astronomer at Yale University and a co-author of the seminal work, has also been advocating for a similar idea as others including Tyson expressing that the James Webb Space Telescope is an important participant in the unfolding of this cosmic drama. According to her, this cutting-edge telescope, along with other cutting-edge instruments, has the future of collecting important data that could finally solve Hawking's hypothesis, and if successful, this would be a major scientific breakthrough.
Right now, it seems as if the James Webb Space Telescope is humanity's best opportunity for pouring light into the shadows of this astronomical mystery given its unmatched capabilities. Not to forget, but since it is naturally resistant to interact with light, dark matter continues to evade direct observation, even though it accounts for a massive 27% of all the stuff in the universe. Yet, due to the enormous mass it possesses, it can mold the motions of galaxies, so leaving an unquestionable mark on the motions of heavenly bodies. Additionally, in the continuous fabric of modern scientific thought, the most common concept of the dark matter rests on the existence of a mysterious subatomic particle that continues to evade our examination, where this particle is said to be responsible for the mysterious properties of dark matter. You see, this proposal argues that there must be an additional particle that has not been found up until this point to solve the mystery. But if you really think about it, Stephen Hawking had already presented an alternative viewpoint, one that skillfully ties together established phenomena such as black holes. There is also a certain fascination with Hawking's hypothesis, which is a tempting thought that black holes, which are cosmic vacuum cleaners that ultimately swallow all light, might hold the key to solving the age-old mystery of dark matter. But for that to be proved right, the puzzling phenomenon that has astronomers in its grip may just need to have a credible explanation in the form of a galaxy that is full of black holes. And, if that's possible or not, well, that's a debate for another day. But could it be that these mysterious black holes are the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to the story of dark matter? One that Hawking, for all these years, tried to prove. And what Tyson is so persistent about? Because if that is not the case, our understanding of the universe's existence could be in danger without the existence of this mysterious stuff. And we really just would be on the verge of crumbling like old paper. Unfortunately, the grand conclusion of huge stars is required for the production of these mysterious cosmic mysteries, known as black holes, given they can only be formed if stars end up collapsing. And because they give in to the unbreakable pull of their gravitational power, these stars may eventually shatter into a vacuum beyond understanding. Still, the formation of supermassive black holes requires an entire galaxy's worth of stars, which in turn requires a significant amount of ordinary matter, one that seems quite impossible right now. Then again, the amount of normal matter in the universe has been painstakingly estimated by scientific minds, with calculations going all the way back to the beginning of the cosmos when hydrogen and helium first combined into a single element. Yet one puzzling conclusion can be drawn from these calculations. There is not enough normal matter that is responsible for the astronomer's estimation of the major amount of dark matter. Despite this, in 1971, Stephen Hawking proposed an ambitious alternative, coming to our rescue once again. You see, he came up with the ambitious idea that black holes could have been present during the stormy birth of the universe, in the universe's earliest, most chaotic breaths, and that they could have formed naturally. On top of that, it's possible that in the course of this violent turbulence of creation, pockets of matter with a density that's just right for giving birth to black holes developed, ultimately giving rise to the possibility that a chain of primitive black holes lived in space for ages, before the first stars were even formed in the universe. Not to mention, according to Hawking's theory, the mysterious element known as dark matter might actually be the very first black hole that ever existed, with the absence of dark matter being explained by the presence of its hidden counterpart. Unfortunately, as time passed, the hypothesis of prehistoric black holes would eventually give way to the mainstream narrative, which holds that black holes are the leftovers of enormous stars and were born at the end of their life cycles. So there's that. So now, as new information has emerged, Hawking's theory has lost some of its shine in the eyes of the scientific community. The majority of astrophysicists have begun to focus their attention on potential alternate solutions for the mystery of dark matter, where one notable candidate has surfaced, and it is the interesting possibility of a subatomic particle that has not yet been discovered, but can solve the mysteries surrounding this cosmic dilemma. On the other hand, the theoretical theories that surround the birth of ancestral black holes have met with their fair share of difficulties. At an early stage, a significant roadblock presented itself in the shape of the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, which refers to the leftover radiation from the early stages of the cosmos. This means if there were an excessive number of these ancient black holes in the early universe, 
The characteristic signature of the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, would have been drastically different. And because of this drawback, the theory could only be considered valid if it was able to be consistent with accurate measurements of the CMB. As a result, the potential number of these ancient black holes and their size seems to be limited. Though despite the original failures of the theory, it underwent a comeback many years later, which was spurred by technological developments such as the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, also known as LIGO. The groundbreaking finding made by LIGO in 2015, of two black holes crashing into each other, added a new level of complication to our knowledge. These black holes, opposite to predictions, revealed a striking range in size, with some being enormous and others surprising in their small nature. This discovery also reshaped the widely held belief that all black holes arose only from the violent implosion of extremely large stars. Instead, the exciting notion that some of these black holes might have been produced in the early periods of the existence of the universe came as a result of this line of inquiry. So, as our understanding of these cosmic mysteries grew deeper, a specific difficulty simultaneously emerged. The intriguing question of how supermassive black holes could acquire their gargantuan sizes over the relatively brief period since the beginning of the universe. Given that thought, in 2021, to better understand this mystery, three hard-working astronomers set out on a quest of exploration. Their goal was to do more research on elementary black holes, which have the potential to shed light not just on the riddles associated with dark matter, but also on the more general mysteries that space itself hides. Eventually, in this updated version of Hawking's theory, fundamental black holes take the spotlight as the central concept. The researchers attempted to rethink the universe by exchanging the mysterious cloak of dark matter for these very lightweight black holes. Their theory centered around a particular mass range, which was around 1.4 times the mass of our Sun, which is a remarkably low mass range when compared to other types of black holes. Additionally, the new model, given boldly by hard-working researchers, also changes the basic brushstrokes in the assumed history of the universe's evolution resulting in an entirely new canvas of cosmic understanding. So, what we are working with now is an important new hypothesis, that ancient black holes, strong guardians of the universe's early years, have been keeping watch since the Big Bang, naturally growing in sizes detectable by current technology by undergoing a heavenly ballet of accelerated mergers within their mysterious embrace. So, amongst all this scientific ballet, the research team has uncovered evidence that these ancient black holes may just have played a crucial role in the early cosmos. It is also possible that the first stars, galaxies, and even the great patterns of supermassive black holes were all created by these cosmic architects. Though, when compared to the seemingly rapid rate at which galaxies and stars appeared in the cosmic chronology, this fresh viewpoint becomes all the more important. Of course, the normal processes of formation and growth, carefully documented in the current cosmos, have a hard time explaining the existence of these enormous celestial events when the universe was young. But turning the clock back to when the universe was only 370,000 years old, we find that the stage was set with gas clouds and dust. The absence of light was the only source. As a result, such ancient black holes could have dramatically shortened this era, which was expected to last hundreds of millions of years, and their powerful gravitational pull may have triggered the rapid collapse of dust and gas, bringing in the era of the earliest stars and galaxies. And so, all of what we just over brings us to a fork in the road, where the future of two conflicting theories is uncertain. Currently, there are two competing stories about when black holes originally appeared in the universe. One says they were there as quiet watchdogs right from the start, while the other says they appeared after the first generation of stars finished their cosmic act, which brings us to James Webb Space Telescope as a major figure. Now, if the universe's first stars and galaxies did indeed form during the Dark Ages, the James Webb Space Telescope may one day unfold evidence supporting this claim, potentially revealing long-hidden cosmic secrets. At the same time, there is also hope on the horizon as the next generation of telescopes prepares to explore the cosmos. 
For one, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA, can help scientists learn more about black holes. And together, LISA and the James Webb Space Telescope might just shine a light on the universe and reveal a story as grand as the cosmos itself, one in which the origins of stars and dark matter are connected because the stage is set and scientists are waiting for James Webb Space Telescope to deliver some facts finally. So, while the mystery surrounding dark matter remains a major puzzle in the complicated network of astrophysics, let us know your thoughts on whether we are chasing a mirage or if there's indeed some reality to what Hawking initially claimed. To catch us for more updates, simply hit the bell icon.